Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Derek Afasi. I'm the owner of Afasi Financial Group. Today's topic I want to discuss with you, can you take money out of your 401k? And uh, the very easy answer to that question is yes, you can, but you just want to be extremely careful when doing so. Um, with a 401k, a type of 401k account is a uh, type of retirement account that an employee is placing money aside uh, from their salary through a private institution. Only private institutions could offer the 401k type retirement accounts. Just like if you had a public institution that would be considered a 403b or um, if it was a federal employee it would be something known as a TSP plan. So all this is is while this person is working for their company they're offered you know different employee benefits packages and one of these uh, one of these benefits might be to take portions of their salary and place it into a type of retirement account that they, they could leverage for later years, you know, for certain withdrawal aspects and certain income aspects, uh, you know, from those accounts, whatever the case may be. So if we understand that this bucket is being contributed to every single year that a person's taking a percentage of their salary and placing into it, this bucket is also typically tied to some sort of mutual fund related accounts. So what mutual funds are is it's going to be a mixture of stocks and bonds. So with a 401k account, you might have uh, access to, let's say, five to 15 different funding options that say, okay, this is a target date fund, or this is a conservative portfolio, an aggressive portfolio, whatever the case may be. So the person that's contributing their dollars into that bucket is hoping that the mutual funds are going to come back with a positive rate of return because if the mutual fund performance came back negative well then this bucket is going to be susceptible to what that negative loss is so throughout time person keeps you know contributing 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 into this type of account and um, in you know 1980 through 2000 they saw these individuals saw large growth into these types of 401k related accounts because the mutual funds in the different markets were doing very very well well unfortunately we've hit more volatile times where you're seeing market Markets go up, markets go down, and it's really impacting that retirement account. And on top of it, they're not only having that risk of the downward market loss, but they're also having the risk of having to pay those mutual fund related fees and those 401k related fees each and every year. So those are sorts of negatives to that account. So when it comes to actually pulling money from this account, there's ways on how you could do it, but you have to make sure that you're hitting certain criteria. One of the first bullet points that I have up is it says age 59 and a half rules, age 70 and a half RMD rules rules. So what this says is if you have a retirement account that's currently sitting at a 401k, um, you you would have eligibility, you would have access to this money to roll over this money if you severed employment uh, at that with that specific employer. If you did not, then you have to leave your money into that 401k account. But there are ways that you could take withdrawals as long as you pull as long as you've already hit that 59 and a half or you've hit, you sufficed that age 59 and a half. So there's certain ways on why that's beneficial to start pulling this money out because it's avoiding some of the negatives with keeping your dollars within that 401k account. So if somebody's in their 50s or in their 40s and they say, okay, I want to start pulling money out of their 401k account, what exactly happens? Why is that a bad thing? Well, it's a bad thing because you did not hit age 59 and a half yet, so the government is going to penalize you. You get hit with a 10% penalty from the IRS, and then on top of it, all the dollars that you're pulling out of that account are going to be fully taxable because it's deemed a qualified retirement account. So if you're going to try to pull out, you know, a hundred grand from your account and you're only in your early fifties and you did not hit that 59 and a half rule, well then understand that there's those risks of you're now going to have to be paying extra 10 grand to the IRS of just trying to pull this money out, you know, prior to that 59 and a half. On top of it, the, the, the IRS has certain uh, provisions saying that you can't leave your money into a 401k and just let it grow and grow and grow and then be left to your beneficiaries. They force you to start pulling these monies out because with all qualified retirement accounts, they force you to start pulling those monies out at age 70 and a half. So if you're looking for like an inheritance maximization play, understand that the government's going to force you to start pulling money from these accounts, meaning that like in the first year, let's say at 70 and a half, it might be 2% of what your total qualified accounts are. And then the next year might be 3%, then it might go up to 3.5%, whatever the case may be. And it's based upon mortality tables, it's based upon actuarial tables to show what that dollar amount is, you know, each and every year. But so a lot of times individuals think, okay, they're in a rock and a hard place, meaning they have to wait till 59 and a half to start pulling this money out to get it without penalty. And they also at age 70 and a half, half they're forced to start pulling that money out. So therefore, that little time horizon within, you know, that that 60 to 70 and a half is going to be 
very crucial for what you're doing with those types of accounts. If you're looking to try to take out a withdrawal from this account, you want to make sure that you're able to maximize out that withdrawal. You want to make sure if you have eligibility to roll your money out of this account, why would that rollover make sense? And let me clear over the screen. So we understand if you try to take withdrawals from your 401k accounts before 59 and a half, you're going to get penalized and you're also going to get hit with, hit with full taxation. Also, because these are deemed qualified retirement accounts, these are deemed for retirement monies, meaning that any time, even after the age 59 and a half, you're still going to be fully taxed on that money because it's known as a qualified retirement account. The 401k is known as a qualified retirement account. So with individuals that, uh, and I see this time and time again, um, that a person would go leave a company, start working for a new company, and they have an old 401k account that's sitting there with that old employer. So what they do is they think that this is now free money, that they could just throw that money into their checking account. And that is the largest negative that somebody does because now they're getting hit with that full taxation, meaning let's say if someone made 100 grand that year and then they had a 401k account that was sitting with $100,000 and they threw that all into their checking account, well, now that's showing that they're making an additional 100 grand. So now that's showing $200,000 that year. So therefore, they could be hit into a higher tax tax bracket, and they're also getting penalized through the IRS for a 10% penalty because they pulled out that 401k before age 59 and a half. So these are different things to be mindful of and make sure if you're looking to pull your money out that you want to make sure that it's that it's set up the proper way and you do not pull your money out until it's, it's you know, it's essentially penalty free until you could really maximize those withdrawals. Make sure that you're, that you're setting it up the proper way. And this is why I have my second bullet point is rollovers, market loss, and income risk. What happens is individuals will go and they'll take their dollars and let's say if they severed employment with an old employer, well now they have access to their 401k and they could roll over those dollars into a type of specifically designed IRA contract. Many times this individual is going to look for growth and they're going to try to risk that money in addition with mutual funds and try to grow that money or leave it in the IRA account, leave it in those mutual funds and then try to take withdrawals from it after they hit age 59 and a half. Well, the downside there is you have a market loss potential that could hinder that account. If you pull out too much income from this account and you're playing that big guessing game of saying, okay, maybe I'll take out you know 20 grand this year or 50 grand the next year. Well, if there's no set plan and this money is still susceptible to that mutual fund related risk and the mutual fund related fees, the market loss, the market risk, well then this could completely liquidate your retirement accounts. And this is what we've been seeing time and time again on why seniors cannot properly retire. So there's ways on what you either sever employment or even once you hit age 59 and a half, you could still be working for your company. You could do something known as an in-service rollover, an in-service withdrawal that you're placing from a 401k directly into an IRA account. And that IRA account now could be maximized. It could be maximized saying that you don't want to have that downward loss. You just want to have that safe consistency with gains into your account. Or you can have it maximized with saying, okay, I'm 60 years old right now. I'm not going to retire until I'm 65 or 66. Let me go and make sure that I have a specific lifetime income rider attached to those types of IRA accounts to make sure that I could trigger lifetime income, not have those negatives and provide life, uh, and provide income for both me and my spouse or just myself for the rest of my life. So I'm never going to run that risk of outliving my money. And that's equivalent to how a lot of individuals have pension income and why individuals that have pension plans have been very successful in retirement is because they they're deemed retired they're you know in their 60s and they're receiving a retirement paycheck that's coming to them month by month by month or year by year by year and they have that confidence that they could never outlive those dollars so that's you know those are certain ways that if you've severed employment and you're in your 40s and your 50s there's ways on how you could leverage those 401k dollars place into an IRA account that's going to have all those benefits and compound and compound compound to be triggered for after 59 and a half to then either take a withdrawal or be able to then leverage that into a new maximized plan. Um, another option is if someone goes and they, leaves their, they leave their money in a 401k account and they just want to leave that to beneficiaries, there's ways on how you could maximize that inheritance because at age 70 and a half, this person is forced to start pulling out these dollars. When you keep pulling out your monies, and it's still invested into those different types of mutual funds and and those uh, those different types of risks that are involved, well, that could liquidate that account further and further. So therefore, you cannot accentuate how much you want to leave as an inheritance. So there's specifically designed IRA contracts that you could roll over, make sure that they have certain death benefit riders to maximize out you know, that growth and make sure that you're eliminating the fees involved. And whenever, God forbid, you were to pass away, your beneficiaries could at least receive a nice lump sum amount um, you know, that would be accentuated. 
because it pertained, you know, specifically to what that goal was. And this brings me to the final bullet point where it says customize specific to your goals. Whether you're looking to take withdrawals out of your 401k account, you're looking to do it before 59 and a half or after 59 and a half, you just want to make sure that you understand what you currently have and really understand what your goals truly are. Because if you have a specific goal that you want to retire at it at you know x amount of age well there's ways on how you could leverage specifically designed either ira contracts or you could set up max withdrawal strategies based upon those types of accounts to make sure that you're receiving that that income you know year by year or you might have an inheritance goal that you just want to be maximized you want to have a safe consistent growth goal that wants to be maximized and there's certain companies out there that offer specifically designed contracts specifically for your benefit so it all goes by what your current age is what the dollar amount is that you're looking to invest, uh, what area you live in, because each contract is going to be specific to a, uh, to a particular state. And um, this is one of the things that we do is we help decipher what are the best options for you. So we're going to educate you on what your current situation is. And if you have you know certain goals, how to accomplish those goals successfully. On average, for each individual that calls our office, we go through over 1,200 different product scenarios and strategies before we give our top three recommendations. And this process is proprietary to us. It's known as the retirement higher sharp planning system um, and it's been very successful you know all throughout the nation we are a plus rate on the better business bureau we've always had very good reviews we've never had any complaints since because of our methodical process i want to thank you very much for watching this video if you found value in this video please feel free to subscribe to our youtube channel retire sharp so you could have the access to the most updated videos thanks so much guys for watching and hope you enjoyed